before we start today's video, I would like to take a moment to say thanks to all my patrons. I wouldn't be able to keep doing these videos without you guys, so thank you so much for all your support. I'd also like to say thanks to Richard Joshua and Code Gorilla for their tier free sub, and special thanks to a Danish person and James Williams Bond for their tier 4 sub this month. So thank you so much you guys. In this video we are going to work a little more on our ranged enemy, and because of that I would like to create an extra, um, extra script. We already have our enemy script, but I would like to create a new one that handles the ranged enemy. So let's make a ranged enemy C sharp script. And we can open up that script and make sure that it inherits from the original enemy script. Because it needs to expand on the functionality that the enemy script already have. Um, let's see here. There we go. So let's inherit from enemy. And we need to use this to shoot arrows and such, so that's that's one of the things we need. So let's start by making a private game object called arrow prefab and civilize it. So this is what we're going to use to instantiate our arrow. Um, I guess that's what we're going to do here right now, um, because later we will make sure that he looks at the enemy and everything. Um, what does it say here? We have start and update, so let's just delete those for now. Um, and then save. We can then go to our game world and find our range by enemy. Right there and click the enemy and then we need to add component and write ranged enemy. So now you can see we have two enemy scripts on this one. We have the enemy script and the ranged enemy. Basically, we need to duplicate everything that is here needs to be copied down here. So let's start by speed 2 and the type of skeleton. The level would be 2 from the get-go. Then we see the ranged enemy, that's that one right here. Hitbox, health stat. If you click on it here, it will highlight over here in the hierarchy which one it is. Uh, we have 100 health from the get-go and the health canvas is that one. Enemy loot tables comes from enemy and the A star also comes from enemy. Then we have some damage, which is five. And Will's portrait, skeleton face, initial acro range is three. And then we have the arrow prefab, which we need to fill in later. Then I can take the enemy script and remove it. And if I run it now, it should still just act like it did before. And um, let's see, if we have a null reference here. So that's object with an object. Current tile script. Oh, um, let's see here. Hitbox. No character. So let's see. The current tile script hitbox needs a character. So to take the enemy and drag it onto there. Now we should be able to run it without null reference. There we go. And if I go in accurate range, it should run to me and start shooting when it gets in melee distance. And it does. Okay. So far, so good. The next thing we need to do is to open up our enemy script again and find the attack range. Let's see there. And we should have something called attack range. There we have my attack range. Actually, we would need to change that. So let's make a private, private uh, float called attack range. And let's delete this, right click, quick actions. Can actually field use field and let's find it down here. So we have attack range, rename that one to my attack range, and that's it. Then we go up here and find the attack range and civilize it and save. And then we need to find the attack range. We're using it somewhere, I think. Here we're setting my attack range to 1, delete that, because we need to set it in Unity. If we don't delete that line, it's always going to have 1 in attack range. But the reason that I'm making this is because our ranged enemy needs another attack range than our melee uh, enemy. Um, so I just want to see what I put in as a range here. Um, attack range would be 5. So let's go here and select our enemy. And let the inspector update for a while. There and find attack range. I can't see it. Did I save? Maybe you can see it now. I can't. I'm blind. Let's see here. 
uh, attack range it is serialized prime flow attack range so should be there speed there attack range five so we have five in attack range which means if I run this now it should start shooting from a range from a distance yeah so now you can see it starts shooting at me from get go we also need to fix that little jump he does when he jumps to the side so if I move he just walks over we also need to fix that but now he has a range on his attack right so the fact the thing about him walking over water it's because he goes from the attack state directly into a follow state right here so if I go outside range I need to go to a follow state well in the case that I'm a ranged enemy I would also always need to go to a um, what's it called I need, I need always need to go to a path state if I'm, I'm a ranged enemy um, so instead of just going to a follow state we will have to jump into the path state. So we do that by saying if parent is ranged enemy. So if it's a ranged enemy, then we do like this path state. Else we simply do this follow state. So now we should go to path states and I, I don't think you will run over the water anymore. Let's try again. Let's see here. I walk away. And now he follows a path instead to get to me. Let's try to make our enemy shoot at us with an actual arrow. So we already added this arrow prefab in here. We would also have to make a private transform um, array called exit points. And that's actually it for now we will need to shoot something so let's make a function here let's make a public function called shoot and it will take in an exit index because we need to know what direction or where we need to spawn the arrow and remember the arrow is going to have different position uh, based on the direction that the skeleton is pointing in so we need to put in some um, objects that will show us where to instantiate the arrow this is almost the same as creating a spell right now our arrows will be spells basically uh, without any specific um, magic to them so instantiate arrow prefab exit points index exit index that position Quaternion dot identity get component spell think uh, spell script sorry there so now we're creating our arrow we also need to make that script though um, and then we initialize it how do we initialize it well let's just say s dot initialize my target dot my hitbox so we need a hitbox here actually my target is just that right now it's so giving some damage as well and the source would be a uh, transform so where do we get the damage from well we should have some initial damage on the enemy so let's go here and go to the top so we have our damage here and we also need to be able to set that um, somewhere or we need to be able to um, access that so right now it's private let's make it protected and save and go to the ranged enemy and then we should have no problem reaching that that damage let's save so my target in general should just be the hitbox uh, later we are going to change the target from a transform into uh, an actual character I'm not sure if we're going to do that in this video or the next one, but it's going to be easier for us to deal damage to the player and such if we use a character instead of a um, 
a transform as a target. So we can jump to Unity, select animation and select our enemy. And then we'll take attack down, for example, and then take the fifth, one, two, three, four, five. Add animation event and select shoot. And we would of course have to select the right, um, what's it called, um, parameter. So first one is zero because it's down. And then we select our attack lift and add animation event shoot and put one then we select attack right add animation event shoot two and attack up add animation event shoot and free now we've set that up we can select the enemy go to the scene oh let's zoom in on the enemy actually let's zoom in on the hitbox here let's just select him enemy right there and let's select attack okay let's see if we can find it I can't remember what it's called it's here sprites enemy to attack uh, down let's do that first and then take the fifth here so select the enemy take the fifth one and put in and see that the arrow is there so we just Right click, create MC, and let's call it exit points. And right click, create empty, call it zero, zero. Select the move tool and take this one and move it all the way to the handle of the arrow. Then you select the enemy again and you select attack left. You take the fifth one, put in, and you duplicate zero, zero and rename it zero, one move it all the way over there right there um, and then you take the fifth one of right select the enemy take the fifth one and put it there and then you duplicate this one call it zero two and move it all the way to the bow and what then we do we do we select the enemy we take up as the last one take the fifth and move on to it and yeah duplicate two, rename it zero three and move it somewhere where you would think the error would spawn so now we have all them we select the enemy um, we should find the exit points they are not showing up because we haven't serialized them so let's go back in here and serialize these exit points let's save and come back here and hope for it to show up and what do you have in there? Let's make four. And actually we could just have taken these. Always forget that. Lock. Select them all and drag them. There. Um, and then we need an arrow prefab, of course. So let's go to prefabs. Let's select a let's see here where would it be items? Nope spells of course duplicate any spell rename to arrow select your arrow if you don't have it here it's because you need to add it let's see here under sprites yeah skeleton 2 we don't have it right there so let's go one back and let's, let's find it in the folder here I should have our assets and my RPG it's here, arrow right there. I'm going to open it up. You'll see that it's pointing down. I'm actually going to rotate it a couple of times right there. So it points to the right. Then when that's done, I'm going to put it in, select it and set the sprite pixel per unit to 300, apply. And then I am going to go back to my prefab and my spells find the arrow and take this arrow prefab and use that or arrow sp sprite it's your animator it doesn't need to be animated though um so i think ah, it's going to explode when you hit the player so that's fine spell script is fine folks so i guess it should keep all these we can just see if something's wrong when we try to shoot it so select the enemy 
take the arrow and drag it onto the arrow prefab. And let's try to run this and see what happens. So something funny might happen now. And it might look like a cool ability, but we need to make sure it doesn't happen. Yeah, right there. So did you see? He shot four arrows uh, right there. And it looks like this could be actually an upgrade for like his ability or something. So he shoots four arrows instead of one. So we need to fix so that it only shoots one. The reason that he shoots more arrows is because we haven't set a specific animation for him when he starts. So it's actually blending um, all the animations in the attack layer. It's blending all of them, so it plays all of them a little. But we need to make sure it only plays one. And to make sure of that, we can go into our ranged enemy. Inside the ranged enemy, we have to... Make sure we're actually just inside the enemy, I would guess, because we simply need to set um, an animation thing for all of them. So let's select the enemy and let's find our start. Do we have a start awake update? Nope. Let's make a protected override of start. It's very important that we call base start and then afterwards we say my animator that set float. Y minus one. So he starts by pointing downwards. So now we have set his direction to minus one. So if we save and go in here, he should only shoot one arrow now instead of instead of four. There we go. So now he shoots one arrow. And right now it's following as we, we haven't complete implemented this yet. He should still only shoot one. And he doesn't shoot at my feet. We of course also need him to shoot at my proper hitbox. But actually now we have an enemy that will follow us around and shoot arrows at us. Right there. So now you see he's not looking at me. That's also something for another video. We need to make sure that he looks at me all the time. So we need to make a feel of view for him as well. Um, but I think that's what we were going to do in this video. In the next one we will uh, make sure that the arrows hit the player and reduce his health and... Also disappears and there's also a few things for example here if we walk to the left here he should he might be sliding over the ground did you see that a little he might be sliding a little sometimes we also need to fix that in a later video right there so thank you very much for watching